uh, for our last guest this evening, uh, we're going to have we're going to have a little conversation and hear from Representative David Tarnas with a legislative update. And we'll share, he will share with us a number of updates and give a recap of the work that was conducted by the Hawaii State Legislature. Uh, if you have any questions for Representative Tarnas uh, during his presentation, please share them in the live stream chat. And we'll try to capture and address as many as we can uh, following uh, Representative Tarnas's uh, updates. Uh, thank you, Representative Tarnas. Uh, the floor is yours, and I can load up your slides whenever you're ready. Why don't you go ahead and please uh, load up those slides. First, thanks very much, James, for uh, facilitating this evening, and thanks to the Waimea Community Association for hosting this. <clears throat> this is very helpful to get the update from our school leaders, and I really want to express my appreciation. It's a very tough job. Uh, but we all rely on you and we really appreciate your good work and thanks for sharing with us your plans to carry out your really important mission to educate our kids. Um, we just finished a unique legislative session. Uh, it, it sort of had three parts to it. What I'd like to do tonight is just give you a, a report on the legislature. Uh, I'm grateful to serve as your state representative and uh, it's been uh, it, it's, it's been a greater challenge than uh, I, I expected, and everyone can say that. This is an extremely challenging time. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people are out of work, uh, and, um, you know, we have are expected our economy to continue to decline. Um, we expect that we will have... Uh, two billion dollars less in tax revenue this year and our people are hurting and so uh, we're trying to get the state is trying to get its unemployment insurance benefits paid to those who uh, are qualified for it and we've stumbled and it's been very difficult for people we my office has done everything we could to try to help uh, correct some of the problems but it's been very difficult for people making ends meet, making sure there's food on the table. Um, we have, the state has paid out over $2 billion in unemployment insurance benefits since March 1st. I mean, these numbers are staggering. It really is. It's just, uh, we, we do need to keep looking out for each other. Uh, and, and, I, and a big mahalo to those who are contributing uh, charitable contributions to uh, help organizations like the Food Basket buy food from local farmers here who are producing the food, who no longer have the market they used to have. So this food purchased with local charitable dollars from local farmers is then going to the Food Basket to give to local families who really need their help. And, and more and more people are asking for food that never have asked for food before. And these are unprecedented times. People are out of work and they've never been out of work before. So have a, a lot of aloha for uh, your neighbors. Um, it's hard to see a lot of people. We're not used to this time apart. So I would just encourage you, if you haven't seen someone for a while, call them up on the phone, uh, especially if they're elderly, uh, if they're homebound. Loneliness is a, a real big challenge. And this time is even, uh, it, it makes loneliness even a bigger challenge. So I just urge you to reach out to your coupon of friends who you haven't seen for a long time. So um, if I could go to the next slide there, James, and, and I'll uh, go ahead and sort of give you an idea of what we're doing here. Next one, please. So uh, we are, um, go ahead, James, the next slide. Uh, we're, we're focusing on, um, first off, trying to stabilize our budget. The Council on Revenues projected a significant uh, loss of revenue, a 7% shrinking of our economy. So um, now that was last year, uh, at the end of June, our calendar for the fiscal calendar for the state starts July 1st. So we already were going into the fiscal year with significant losses planned. So we had to figure out how to pay for current um, I think programs and, and uh, um, commitments. Then we need to look forward to the fiscal year we've just started. That's FY21. We're projecting uh, that we'll have a 12% drop in our revenues 
in, in economic activity in FY21. So it's <clears throat> significant, like I say, it's about a $2 billion uh, projected loss over the fiscal years that we're trying to produce a budget for. So um, we do think that <clears throat> based on some assumptions, the Council on Revenues projected that if we were to get travel resumed uh, by late July or August, and a vaccine were available by the middle of FY22, um, then they've set out a projection going a couple of years down the road that we would have a 12% recovery in FY22. So based on the projections from the Council on Revenues, in the short term, the governor may have to make additional cuts, restricting funding that we appropriate at the legislature. And so uh, we have a requirement that we can't spend more money than we bring in. So I expect that the governor will be uh, having to make some restrictions um, and we'll just have to wait and see how that unfolds. Let's go to the next slide, please. One of the ways that we were trying to address this issue of a, a budget shortfall is to allow the state to borrow some additional funds from the federal government. So we had to pass a bill to increase the uh, limit on bond financing. And there is a federal um, source of that that we authorized the, the um, EGA administration to borrow up to $2 billion. He's choosing to borrow perhaps up to 700 million is what he's currently uh, estimating. Let's go to the next slide, please. The, uh, one of the other ways we worked to balance the budget was by cutting uh, the state budget by eliminating all vacant positions and any unspent funds identified by each department. We eliminated that. And then we uh, took all the aggregated savings and unused special funds and then in some cases, we replace general fund financing with bond financing. Different techniques basically to try to balance the budget. Please go ahead. It, one of the key ways that government can help to strengthen our economy, especially during a time when we're not having a lot of economic activity because of the lack of tourists, <clears throat> one of the ways that government can help to stimulate the economy is through public infrastructure projects. So it was really important that we do pass a strong capital improvement project budget. And I'm very grateful that we were able to include in there major projects that we have been trying to get funded for many years. Uh, a, uh, here in Waimea, we've been working on uh, improvements to uh, make our roads safer. Uh, we are uh, able to get the legislature to support $22 million to pay for safety improvement projects in the Waimea area. These are on Kauai High Road, through town, intersection between Kauai High Road and Lindsay Road, intersection uh, between Mamalahoa and Lindsay Road, uh, other improvements on Mamalahoa, and then also the beginnings of planning for a bypass that would go from Kauai High Road by about 1,000 foot elevation out around uh, the Lalamilo farm lots and end up on Mamalahoa Highway out by the airport. These are big projects and it's tough to get started, but we were able to get started. $22 million to get those projects started. The project is just starting its environmental uh, impact statement uh, work. And so uh, be alert and, and uh, we can keep you informed so that everyone can be involved in the planning for that project. The second big project we were able to get funded is, is the Saddle Road Extension Project. This is of, of island-wide importance, and it's a big win for us to be able to get this. $90 million in state funds, it would extend the Saddle Road Highway from its terminus at Mamalahoa Highway all the way down to Queen Kaahumanu. And it will facilitate cross-island traffic for trucks and commuters, it would also assist by having the military convoy go up that road rather than Waikoloa Road. Uh, the uh, environmental report is almost completed and with this funding this will allow us um, the necessary resources to go forward on that. And so uh, again those will be uh, uh, projects that will be uh, involving the community. They'll come back to us with their recommended alignment uh, for the road 
uh, as well as the intersection improvements at Mama La Hoa. There's been a lot of discussion about those. Uh, the third project, Waiaka Bridge. Uh, this we've we've already put in about six million. We just put in another four million, and this is to help pay for additional costs to purchase the property, as well as uh, some additional design and uh, um, uh, and planning funds that were needed. So we should be seeing some public announcement about this project very soon as well. Uh, they're going to come to us in the community now that they're fully funded to move forward and talk to us about what kind of alignment do we want to have at the intersection of Kohala Mountain Road and Kwai Hai Road and the replacement bridge. Um, there's a number of different proposals and uh, there was previous work done on this and EA was done that was never completed. We had designs for a roundabout. We had designs for a T of different angles. We'll go through all that again to ask your input. So all of the commuters who come through, certainly HPA, you're right next door, all the neighborhoods close by will need to be involved because we all use Waihaka Bridge to come and go. And so it's gonna be a very important improvement. And so your involvement in that will be very important. And then we got some additional money for some Kwai High Road safety improvements as well. Mostly, um, uh, it, it includes a number of things, but among them is a runaway truck ramp, which we really need. Uh, could you go on to the next slide, please? Uh, these are additional projects that we were able to move forward in the budget as well. We extended the financing for Waikoloa Library uh, um, land purchase. Um, we had not finished the deal and the money was going to lapse, so we were able to extend that money. We were able to extend the money to purchase the parking lot next to the post office uh, and because that was going to lapse and we hadn't finished that deal. <laughs> and so that was extended. So that was a, another good thing we got in the budget. And that project is moving forward. Um, uh, still not completed, but it's moving forward. Waikoloa Library uh, parcel uh, is still moving forward, but we've got a challenge because we don't have a clearance from the Corps of Engineers that they took away all of the UXO. So we're still working on that. But you're not, we keep per 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 persevering, we'll figure it out. Um, Waimea Middle School, we were able to uh, change the language in our appropriations there so they can use the funds, not just for the steam building repairs and weatherization, but also to replace the school's aging phone and uh, communication system, which will be very important. Uh, uh, and we especially know that now. And finally, um, the North Kohala Agricultural Water Project is an important project to help sustain uh, our ag production in the North Kohala area. James, could you go to the next slide, please? Um, I won't go through all these, but these are different grant and aid uh, that we were able to give in the uh, 2019 session, we were not able to give any in the 2020 session. So there's a couple in Waimea here um, and, and Kohala. Uh, Kohala, uh, Hawaii Institute of Pacific Agriculture does a, a hub up in uh, Kohala to aggregate produce from local farmers. Uh, and one of their markets is the uh, school cafeteria. Um, we also were able to give a grant to Hawaii Wildfire Management Organization, which is based here in Waimea. It works statewide and is very effective at helping us reduce our wildfire risk. And then finally, uh, the Waimea Outdoor Circle. We were to get, able to get them some support to uh, do uh, improvements on their roadway, pave their roadway um, in, in uh, Ululao Nature Park. So grateful for all the uh, support we were able to get there. James, we can go on to the next one, and I'll just now run through some of the um, COVID bills that we were able to pass and then some legislation. Um, you've read all this in the newspaper, um, but what we did, the federal government, you know, they, they passed some COVID aid, uh, COVID-19 relief initiatives, and these are aid to the states. So we got about uh, $1.3 billion to the state government to address COVID. 19. We had to pass uh, budget bills to appropriate those to different state and county agencies. Um, and so we've uh, done that in the bills that I'll describe briefly. In addition to those 1.3 billion in federal funds, we also received 
$7.7 billion in federal funds through various other federal programs. So we've been uh, strongly supported by the federal government. And uh, so let's go to the next slide, please. Um, we have uh, allocated, you can go through and read this, but we tried to divide up the funds that we were getting into those that really were of immediate priority, uh, whether it's um, providing for Department of Defense for purchase of personal protective equipment to paying DOT, uh, make sure they had the money for thermal screening at airports. We put money into the unemployment insurance system and, uh, and the fund money into EBT and SNAP um, and also uh, money into DOH so they can actually uh, work to manage the contact tracing, testing, and purchasing of PPE. But, and I wanted to highlight that of the money that we allocated to the counties, we were able to designate $80 million for Hawaii County specifically. And that money, now the county is getting it out to the community through various different programs. And uh, so that is something that's gonna help us get through these tough times. Let's go to the next slide, please. Um, the other appropriation that the federal government gave to us that we then uh, allocated to different uh, programs was through the CARES Act funding for direct program support. So we put in 230 million into unemployment insurance assistance just to help to pay for what those uh, increasing costs there. Housing relief uh, and resiliency program, 100 million there. Child care grant, 15 million. And you can read the rest there. Food assistance is one I wanna point out. You know, 5 million for food assistance to families in need, 3 million to help purchase the fish in order so that we can get them into the um, meals and get them to our community. And I wanna mention that last one there, public high school graduates. We were knowing that some of these graduates or many of these high school graduates, they didn't get that last semester of school to really help them prepare to move forward. So we specifically appropriated some funds to support the 2020 graduates uh, to help, which including access to college counseling and online classes. Next slide, please. Okay, you're probably all worn out with all these words, but let's just quickly go through some top legislation. Next slide, please. You can get more details here, capital.hawaii.gov. Go ahead, please. So these are some of the, the bills that we are passing in education, and I'll just explain briefly what these are. Uh, and, um, HB 2543, that basically expands the preschool open doors program. It expands our publicly funded early learning program. The next bill uh, supports that. Um, the, the, the following bill on school facilities agency, we, we're gonna try something new to help improve DOE facilities construction management. I can give you more details if you're interested. Um, HB 1523 is basically appropriating CARES Act money to the DOE. And then the last one is to support the Pacific International Space Center for Exploration Systems, which is attached to UH Hilo. You wanna to go to the next one, please? So relating to public safety and justice, a big bill that a lot of public attention was HB 285. We're basically now requiring police departments to report instances of officer misconduct um, and also establishing a law enforcement standards board to establish policies about various things, including use of force. Um, the next bill on 1620 is an important step to help get nonviolent defendants who are deemed unfit for trial due to mental health issues diverted out of the um, jail system and into the mental health treatment system. Um, let's go to a, a couple different bills on uh, gun violence prevention. And then the one I wanna mention on highway safety is actually on Oahu, it's a photo red light imaging detector system. It basically does to take pictures of people running red lights. They're gonna run a pilot project in Waikiki first. And we'll see how that goes. Okay, we just got another minute or two to go. Agriculture, the, the legislature passed an industrial hemp uh, production bill to allow for industrial hemp in Hawaii. And then we passed another bill on agricultural buildings. This was something that the counties were asking for, just as, so they can come and make sure that the ag buildings are in fact ag buildings. 
um, and not built in the in the uh, setback. Finally, under an environment, um, the next one, I guess we have coastal zone management. It has to do with sea level rise, incorporating sea level rise uh, in and uh, coastal erosion protection. Um, and then we passed a bill that would help us to continue addressing little fire ants, which is a major problem here. And then also planning, we created a new sustainability division. And then I guess I have one more slide in this, that'll be my last one. We uh, changed the family leave laws to extend family leave to include care of grandchildren. Um, and then uh, the, the last bill I wanna emphasize is the last one there, HB 2425 which is expanding the definition of domestic abuse to include coercive control. Uh, this was a bill that was suggested by a resident, uh, a group of residents here in, in uh, our district. And I appreciate Barbara Gerbert for her educating me about this. And we were able to pass the bill to make this important change that will help us in domestic abuse uh, protection uh, and prevention. So let's go to the last slide and I wanna say thank you to everyone. That's an overview of the, uh, the legislation that we passed. Um, and I'm gr happy to answer any questions, uh, but you can al also just uh, email me or call me. And I send out a newsletter very uh, regularly and, uh, and I'm told that they're very helpful and informative. So if you too want a newsletter, this is where you can sign up. So thank you very much for your attention and I'm happy to respond to any questions. Back to you, James. Thank you, Representative Tarnas. Uh, appreciate all your knowledge on everything there and sharing all these details on all these bills and uh, the importance that, of the work that you're doing. Um, let's see, so I do have one question that came in uh, from the live stream and I'm sure people can always reach out to you with other questions going forward. And so I'll give you this question and then you're welcome to touch on other things if you like, go in more detail or uh, the floor is yours for a few minutes if you'd like if we until we get some other questions in on the live stream so this question does kind of relate to what we've been talking about tonight and hearing from our school administrators and our, our academic institutions here and you might be familiar with this as well uh, at the state legislature the question is many families are having to choose between work and educating their children during this time how can we solve our child care issue is there additional funding available for programs such as Kama Aina Kids? Uh, we did um, provide some additional funding for child care providers uh, so that they can get assistance in, in uh, and so if, if those who, if you are running a child care operation, um, and if you want to get details on that, please let me know, I can give you details. But um, the, the short answer is, uh, parents, I would suggest that you should call or email PATCH, P-A-T-C-H. Um, they normally do pre-K child care referrals, and, but they can work with parents to provide them with recommendations for child care for school-aged kids too. Um, Come Aina Kids, which runs the A-plus program, uh, has been doing a program over the summer, and they uh, and, and we've heard that they hope to extend or possibly expand into this fall, but we, we, this is really contingent on the county uh, facility where they've been holding the program, uh, actually allowing them to continue there, which is a question where they, they, are, they are inquiring. Um, we, I know that our councilman, Tim Richards, is working on this as well. Um, we recognize mm -hmm. that this is a, a real challenge when working parents uh, have to go to work and yet they've got this young child at home because they can't go to school for five days of the week. So that's our best suggestion so far. We're still trying to work on that. I know that if you have a concern, please bring it up with your principal. They would help try to figure out an answer to this as well. But that's the latest I have. Thank you, Representative. Um, you still have a, we still have a few minutes with you if you'd like to talk about anything else. Um, the floor is yours for a couple minutes if you'd like to share anything else uh, from, from your experience at the close of the, close of the session, the recess of the, the session. You're welcome to have a couple minutes here if you'd like. Thank you. I guess I, it would be useful for, you, it was useful for you to just get a sense of that it was a very different kind of legislature because when, usually when we're there, we're working with each other, we're talking to each other, we're always gathering and 
but that all went by the wayside. So everything, we didn't even have, uh, you know, the opportunity for hearings and having people come in to give testimony and we can ask questions. So it was a, it was a real challenge, but I think the silver lining is that it's, we're, it's forcing the legislature to figure out how to accommodate remote participation. And uh, we do need to figure out how to make it work so that neighbor islanders can testify on bills and not have to fly over to Honolulu. This has been a long time goal of representatives and senators from our area here. And uh, I have a bill that uh, would have set this up um, and yet there was great reluctance to pass this uh, last session. And now you think about it, had we actually started the process, we would have been further ahead and not be stumbling at so much as what we're stumbling right now. So uh, we have to do some basic things at the Capitol just to make this work. You know, we find that we've got uh, bandwidth limitations at the Capitol to be able to accommodate all of the hearings that are happening all at the same time. For us to be able to broadcast, live stream, we've got to improve our, our capacity. And that's just at the Capitol. What we're talking about is reflection statewide. Students have a hard time getting access to their online resources because their bandwidth is limited. They don't have access to a device. They don't have access to the internet. So we're having to face some of these key issues for making distance learning work. And I really acknowledge all the, the because it's a huge challenge and I know many of you have been doing it for some time and you are ahead of the curve but I'm I hear a lot of people struggling um, and so that's one of the big things we're trying to figure out is how do we support the education system to be able to meet the needs of the students as best as possible through online uh, educational um, programming and um, we have a long way to go we have a long way to go uh, so that's that's one of our unique challenges, uh, and I would welcome input from any of the professionals here on this call. Uh, from your experience, you know, what do we need to do to strengthen our our uh, capacity here in the state? Back to you, James. Thank you, Representative. And so that's a you know a call out to to the viewers here. If you do have questions for any of any of the particular guests that join us tonight, um, please reach out to those institutions, those schools. And of course, reach out to your representative, Representative David Tarnas, if you have particular questions about the bills that you saw and you heard about. There's a lot of information there, and we were able to capture a little bit. And I hope you learned uh, quite a bit from um, Representative Tarnas's um, wealth of knowledge there. So I appreciate that. Um, so mahalo, Representative Tarnas, for your tireless work. Um, we appreciate your attention to detail and the care you show for our communities. Mahalo. Thank you.